Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. Here's what it says. For thou art an holy people unto the Most High thy Elohim. The Most High thy Elohim hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Most High did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Most High loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, turning losers into winners. That's what the Most High does. He's done that with us as a people. And in these verses of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 8, he's reminding us that it is him that took us from being losers to being winners. He says he chose us because we were the fewest of all people. He said he chose us not because we were the mightiest of all people, but the fewest of all people. He turned losers into winners. And in these times, it's important to meditate on that. Because in these times, we constantly need the most high to take us from one level to another, to take us from one strength to another strength, from one understanding to another understanding. We have to always realize that we're in a state where we need the most high to continue to level us up and upgrade us, to take us from losers to winners. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse three through six. It says, understand therefore this day that the most high thy Elohim is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire, he shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the most high have said unto thee. Speak not thou in thine heart after that the most high thy Elohim have cast them out from before thee saying, for my righteousness the Most High have brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, does the Most High drive them out from before thee? Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Most High thy Elohim doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Most High swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that the Most High thy Elohim giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Once again, the Most High is reminding us that it is him that is taking us from being losers to being winners. In these verses, the Most High had to constantly remind our people and is still having to remind our people today that it's not because of our righteousness. It's not because of our strength. We have been the fewest of all people. It's the most high that has turned us from losers into winners. It's important to never lose sight of this because that fact right there is what will always give us the purpose, the meaning, the motivation, and the focus, and the discipline, and the consistency to always get victory, understanding that it is the most high that has taken us from losers to winners, not our righteousness, not our strength, not our knowledge, not our wisdom, not our skills and abilities, but the most high that has turned us from losers to winners. And it's not just important to remember this fact to have a sense of what they would call quote unquote humility. It's not even about that. What it's about is always understanding that we have to empty ourselves before the most high. Like in the book of Revelation, it talks about how the 24 elders cast their crowns at the most high's feet. The scripture talks about pouring out your heart like water 
before the face of the Most High. The scripture talks about going to the Most High as empty and then he filling your cup up, overflowing. It's about us understanding that the Most High takes us from losers to winners. So whenever we have that mindset, no matter where we are in our life or in our situation right now, we know that the Most High can always better it. If he can take us from being the fewest of people to being a people above all people, then surely he can change you and change your situation where you're at right now and who you are right now, who you with right now, what you're doing right now, how, how you feel about yourself right now, how other people feel about you right now. He can take all that and turn it into a winning situation. He can take you and turn you into a champion. He can take you and turn you into an overcomer. He can take you and turn you into a Holy Spirit baptized, wise, strong, wealthy, undefeated Hebrew child of the Most High. Because that's what the Most High does. He turns losers into winners. He does it with individuals and he does it with entire nations. He does it with households and families. He does it with ministries. He does it with businesses. Whatever it is that you have your hand in that you may have felt like has been a losing situation, the Most High is in the business of turning losers into winners. This is what he's telling us in these scriptures that I just laid forth, that he can take losers and turn them to winners. And this applies both for people who have borne much fruit to those who have not borne much fruit. Because whether we have borne much fruit and accomplished many things for the most high in our life, the scripture says that whenever a tree bears fruit, that the most high and the Messiah would purge that tree and cut that tree so that it will bear even more fruit. In other words, they take away so that they can add to. It's addition by sub subtraction. So even if you consider yourself in this walk and in this life, somebody who has accomplished many things, you very well may have. Well, guess what? There's even more to accomplish. There's even more victory. There's even more success. There's even more destiny. It's the same mindset as a team that's won a game. They don't sit there and be satisfied that they've won two games, three games, four games. Their mindset should be, let's go win the next game. And then let's go win the next game. And then let's go win the next game. It's a constant process of going from a state of losing to winning. It's a constant mindset of being in a state of going to emptiness to fullness. So if you somebody that has many victories in this walk and in this life, there's more victories to attain. If you're somebody that feel like you have no fruit, that you have accomplished nothing up until this point, you're in a perfect place for the most high to take you from a loser to a winner. It can be done. It shall be done. The most high's will be done. And his will is to be the Elohim of overcomers. And if he is your Elohim, and if he is the Elohim of overcomers, for you to be a part of his fold, for you to be a part of his flock, that means you too are an overcomer. Even if right now, where you are and who you are is a losing situation, the Most High is in the business of taking losers and turning them into winners. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. And such were some of you but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and by the spirit of our Elohim. 
these scriptures right here remind us of two things. It reminds us of those who are considered losers in the eyes of the Most High, those who will not inherit the kingdom, those who are losers in eternal life, who will not make it to the kingdom. In the eyes of the Most High, the losers are the unrighteous, the fornicators, the idolaters, the adulterers, the effeminate, the abusers of themselves with mankind, the thieves, the covetous, the drunkards, the revilers, the extortioners. That whole list in the eyes of the Most High are the losers. But here's what else it says in that verse. But such were some of you. Because a lot of times we'll read those first few sentences and we'll feel like we've reached a place in our walk that we're not none of those things, so we're good. We know about the feast days and we keep them, so we good. We know about avoiding idolatry and uh, false religion, so we good, right? We know about who the true people are, so we good, right? We know about the lost books and have all the extra knowledge on how to worship in spirit and in truth, so we good, right? Well, the scripture is reminding us, such were some of you. The scripture is reminding us that all I am, all you are, all we are is losers that the Most High turned into winners. Yes, it's true that none of the people who do these things, none of those individuals will inherit eternal life, but it's important for those who are the remnant, those who are the set apart, righteous, undefeated champions of eternity, that they never forget that such were some of us. Let us never forget that we are a people that were the fewest of all people. Let us not forget that it's not because of our righteousness that the Most High overthrows our enemies. Let us not forget that we were some of these things on this list and some of us are still working out our salvation with fear and trembling because we're struggling still with some of the things on this list. But the good news is, the great news is, the Most High turns losers into winners. The Most High turns the defeated into the dominant. And that's the power that we're calling upon today. We're calling upon the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're calling upon the eternal undefeated champion of Israel. We're calling upon that power to take us from losers into winners because that's what he's in the business of doing. But let us never forget, it's him that's taking us from being losers and turning us into winners. Let's take a look at a couple situations in scripture of individuals that the Most High took from losers to being winners. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. It says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. This was at a time where in King David's life, yes, the same King David that is spoken of with such high regard in history, where even unbelievers know his name. That same King David, at this time in his life, he was losing. At this time in, in his life, he was on the run from uh, Shaul. On this time in his life, a lot of the people that was rocking with him whenever he slayed Goliath was not with him no more. But guess who was with him? It said the people who were in debt, distress, and discontent. So the people that gathered to David when he was at his low point was other people who was also at their low point. And then they formed a team and all of them together went from being losers to being winners. Because when you look in the scripture, that same 400 men that it says here in 1 Samuel 22 gathered to David when he was at his low point, these became his mighty men. These same individuals that at that time in their life society, people in their family, or people who was decided to go with Saul was looking at them as the losers, looking at them as the outcasts. 
Saul was the one in the kingdom. Saul was the one with all the chariots. Saul was the one with all the wives, the wealth, the influence, the power. David was basically homeless out there running around in the wilderness, sleeping in caves. But guess what? The Most High took him from a loser to a winner. And all those men that was with him that at that time in their life were losing, they joined to David and they became an untouchable team. They became the conquerors of nations. They become the rulers over the Gentiles. They became winners, even though they started off as losers together. This is something that should give fire in our heart because no matter what situation that you in today, we need to be like those men that gathered unto David. We need to gather unto the Messiah. We need to gather unto those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We need to fellowship with other brothers and sisters who, even if they may be at a low point right now, they have that mindset of victory, success, and destiny, just like David did. Even though he was at a low point, he did not view himself lowly. Even though he was at a low point, he knew he had the anointing to be king. Even though he was at a low point, he knew he had the capability and the ability to slay giants because he had already did it. He already knew he could slay lions and bears because he already did it. So no matter what point you are at in your life right now, you could be exactly like King David with nowhere to stay, running around sleeping here and there, not knowing where you'll lay your head the next night. That could be your situation, but understand the most high can take a losing situation and make it a winning situation. The most high takes losers and turns them into winners, just like David and these men that gathered with him. All of them became mighty captains and rulers. In just a few years after this, just a few years after this, all these men that was in debt, all these men that was in distress, meaning pain and struggle, all these men that was in discontent, meaning uh, they had nobody to love them. They had nobody to uh, claim them as their own. They was pushed away, rejected and hated by some of the people around them. But once they connected up with David, they became a part of an undefeated team. They became a part of a history making squadron of soldiers and generals that the pages of history will know their name forever, all the way through eternity. But they started off as losers and the most high made them winners. The same thing can happen with you. The same thing can happen with anybody who is in a situation right now where they feel like they're losing. The most high turns losers into winners. That's what he does, just like he did it with David. Let's go to Judges chapter six, verse 12 through 16, it says, and the angel of the most high appeared unto him and said unto him, the most high is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, my Elohim, if the most high be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us saying, did not the most high bring us up from Egypt? But now the most high hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Most High looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, My Elohim, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Most High said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. This is the story of the mighty general Gideon, where whenever the Most High approached Gideon, he was at his pop's house cleaning up. He, it said the angel met him when he, would at, when he was at his father's house cleaning up outside, cleaning up the, uh, the, the wine press and the threshing floor. And whenever the angel told him what his assignment was, even Gideon basically started going into a loser pity party. He was like, my family is a bunch of nobodies. Uh, our people are being oppressed. Uh, everybody's doing this and that to us. And whenever you look at what the angel said, the angel didn't even ever acknowledge the pity party. All the angel said was, look, you are a mighty man of valor. 
and you're going to go conquer for the most high. You're going to go win victories and successes for the most high. So the angel didn't even respond to Gideon's pity party. All he did was give him the assignment to conquer. All he did was give him the mission and the objective to dominate. No pity parties. The angel is like, look, I'm here to let you know that you about to go from a loser to a winner. So no more should you have the mindset of a loser. No more should you have the mindset of what everybody's doing against you or doing to you or um, oppression on you. I'm about to give you strength and power to overcome the opponent, to overcome the oppressor. Focus on that. And that's the same thing we need to do in these times. The Most High is looking at us and saying, you are a mighty people of valor because I have turned you from losers into winners. So walk in that power, walk in that victory, walk in that success, walk in that destiny, walk in that identity. Just like Gideon, the Most High is coming to us by his uh, Holy Spirit and he's saying, stand up, thou mighty people. Stand up, thou wealthy people. Stand up, thou wise people. Stand up, thou undefeated people. I'm taking you from being losers to being winners. That's the mindset. Losers to winners. No more loser pity party mindset. It's a winner, victory, success, destiny mindset. It's a blessings of Deuteronomy 28 mindset. It's a Revelation chapter two and three, blessed is he who overcomes mindset. That's the mindset. That's where we at. That's where we on. The most high turns losers into winners. Now let's go to the book of Enoch. Let's go to the book of Enoch, chapter 103, verse nine through chapter 104, verse six. Because in these verses right here, Enoch is saying the exact same thing that the angel told Gideon. He's motivating the people like Deion Sanders at halftime, like Deion Sanders pumping up uh, the Colorado Buffaloes to go out and win a victory. Enoch is giving the people of the Most High that same motivation talk, that same conqueror talk, that same winner talk, that winner mindset talk. He says, do not say righteous and good who are alive. In the days of our affliction, we toiled laboriously and saw every affliction and met many evils. We were spent and became few and our spirit small. We were destroyed and there was no one who helped us with words or with deeds. We were powerless and found nothing. We were tortured and destroyed and did not expect to see life from one day to the next. We hoped to become the head, but became the tail. We toiled and labored, but were not masters of the fruits of our toil. We became food for the sinners and the lawless made their yoke heavy upon us. Those who hated us, those who goaded us were masters of us. And to those who hated us, we bowed our necks, but they did not have mercy on us. We sought to escape from them so that we might flee and be at rest, but we found no place where we might flee and be safe from them. We complained about them to the rulers in our distress and cried out against those who devoured us. But they took no notice of our cries and did not wish to listen to our voice. And they helped those who plundered us and devoured us and those who made us few. And they concealed their wrongdoing. And they did not remove from us the yoke of those who devoured us and scattered us and killed us. And they concealed our slaughter and did not remember that they had raised their hands against us. So Enoch is telling the righteous, don't have these pity parties. Don't talk that defeated talk. But listen to what he tells the righteous, the remnant, what mindset to have. He says, I swear to you, righteous, that in heaven, the angels remember you for good in front of the glory of the great one and that your names are written down in front of the glory of the great one. Be hopeful. For you were formerly put to shame through evils and afflictions, but now you will shine like the lights of heaven and will be seen and the gate of heaven will be open to you. So Enoch is basically saying, don't have no more pity parties. The most high has taken you from losers into winners. 
Verse three, and persevere in your cry for judgment and it will appear to you for justice will be exacted from the rulers for all of your distress and from all those who help those who plundered you. Be hopeful and do not abandon your hope for you will have great joy like the angels of heaven. What will you have to do? You will not have to hide on the day of the great judgment, nor will you be found to be sinners. The eternal judgment will be upon you for all the generations of eternity. And now do not be afraid, you righteous, when you see the sinners growing strong and prospering in their desires. And do not be associated with them, but keep far away from their wrongdoing, for you will be associates of the host of heaven. So that same Enoch that gave the righteous, that motivation speech is the same one who also wrote in the scriptures of Enoch, where he says, woe to you sinners. Don't you know that the righteous will cut your throats and kill you? That same Enoch prophesied that the losers were turned into the winners and that they would be the ones cutting the throats and stamping on the necks of their opponents. This is what the Most High does. He takes losers and turns them into winners. The same thing that it says in the wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, verse one through seven, losers and the winners. Here's what it says. Then the upright man will stand with great boldness, face to face with his oppressors and with those who set his labors at night. They will be dreadfully dismayed at the sight and amazed at the unexpectedness of his deliverance. They will talk to themselves in repentance and in their distress of mind, they will groan and say, this is the man we fools once laughed at and made a byword of reproach. We thought his life was madness and his end dishonored. How did he come to be reckoned among the sons of Elohim? Why is his lot among the saints? And the light of uprightness did not light us and the sun did not rise upon us. We were full of paths of lawlessness and destruction and we traveled through trackless deserts but we did not recognize the Most High's road. In those scriptures, those who were once the opponents of the righteous are now crying and mourning and saying, the people that we once laughed at are now ruling over us. The rejected shall become the respected. The loser has turned into the winner because the Most High, what does he do? He turns losers into winners. So even if you're in a situation right now in your life where you feel like you're a loser, and the truth may be that you may be a loser right now because of decisions that you've made in life, understand this, don't have no pity parties. Understand that the Most High can take losers and turn them into winners. He can take you from where you at to where you're supposed to be. All praise to the Most High. Now let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, and let's go to Sirach 11, verses 11 through 13, and then verse 21. Here's what it says. It says, my child, do not busy yourself about many things. If you multiply your activities, you will not be held guiltless. And if you pursue, you will not overtake, and you will not escape by running away. One man toils and labors and hurries and is all the worse off. Another is slow and needs help, lacks strength and has plenty of poverty. Yet the eyes of the Most High look favorably upon him and he lifts him up out of his low position and lifts up his head and many wonder at him. Now, let's go down to verse 21. Do not wonder at the doings of the sinner but trust in the most high and stick to your work for it is easy in the most high's eyes swiftly and suddenly to make a poor man rich. So the most high is saying here, look, stick to your work. Keep your winner's mindset. Keep going. Keep grinding. Keep that winner's mindset. Keep that victory, success, destiny mindset. Keep that wealth mindset. Keep that winner mindset. And in due time, the Most High will take a loser and turn them into a winner. That's what the scripture is telling us here. It's telling us that in the eyes of the Most High, it's nothing. It's easy work. It's light work for him to take a loser 
and turn them into a winner. But you got to have that victory, success, destiny mindset. You have to see overcoming. You have to see wealth. You have to see uh, victory, success, destiny. You have to see entering into the kingdom. You have to see obeying the most high. You have to see being filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to see repenting, being baptized by water, being baptized by the Holy Spirit, keeping the commands, believing on Yeshua HaMashiach, working out your salvation and enduring to the end. That has to be your mindset. That's how losers are turned into winners. That's the path. That's the way. That's how this thing is done. That's the kingdom. As it says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one, a strong nation. Again, the most High here is saying, I'm going to take the loser and turn them into a winner. And then once they become winners, they shall be losers no more. In life, sometimes we are in losing positions, either because of bad decisions or situations outside of our control. But the fact remains, it's on us to go to the most high and walk in obedience and labor with our hands and work wisely with our mind to make the best out of the situation that we in so that we don't stay losers. Because it's definitely not the most high's will for us to stay in defeat. The scripture says that the most high is a mighty man of war. He's an Elohim of victory. And we are a people of victory. As we just read at the beginning of this discussion in Deuteronomy 7, verse 6 through 8, the Most High has now made us a people of victory. He's taken us from losers to winners. So that has to be our mind state. Just like in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 3 through 6, he's made us know the way to righteousness, to walk in it. He's the one that's turned us from losers into winners. So now is our time to become like David, like Gideon, to be mighty for our households, to be warriors in the truth, to do those things that the Most High commands, and to be winners in this life and in the life to come, to have victory, success, and destiny in this life and in the life to come. Look at the Deion Sanders situation. Look what that man did at Jackson State and now what he's doing at Colorado. When he went to Jackson State, before he was there, that was a losing team. And he turned that whole team around with teaching them a victory mindset. And they became a winning, high-level team, Jackson State. He left Jackson State, and now he's at Colorado. Last year, that Colorado football team was 1-11. and 11. So far now, under... Dion's leadership, they are three and oh. This is an example of what I'm talking about, about a, what a winner mindset does. Whenever you take a winner mindset, a victory, success, destiny mindset to your household, to your business, to your ministry, to your team, to your job, whatever it is that your hand finds to do, do it with that victory, success, destiny mindset. And you'll find that the most high will work mightily through you and take losing situations and turn them into winning situations so that all nations and all peoples shall know that the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is truly working with you and in you. How else will they know it unless we're out here demonstrating? People knew that the Messiah was who he said he was because he demonstrated. He demonstrated the victory, the power. He demonstrated the achievements. So even if they wanted to doubt him, they couldn't doubt the achievements. They couldn't doubt the miracles. They couldn't doubt the works. So people may be looking at you crazy whenever you share with them some of these truths. Sometimes it's because it's not their portion to receive eternal life. Their eyes have been blinded. Their heart has been hardened. Other times it may be that you're in a situation where you're not fully demonstrating yet to where they could believe. They may be looking at you like a loser right now, but the Most High can take losers and turn them into winners. So it will come a point that when they see you demonstrating at a certain level, 
whether it's through business, whether it's through ministry, or whether it's just through your righteous character and how you handle situations, how you think, and how you demonstrate through righteous character and just how you are, that they'll have to respect it and they'll have to understand there is a power that's with this person. Even if they can't stand you or they can't stand what you teach, they have to know the fruit is undeniable. And that's the level that the Most High, glory to glory, little by little, that he's taken us to as individuals in our individual life and in a totality as a people. But since we as individuals, we can't control or handle what the nation as a whole does. All we can do is control ourselves, our households, and everything that our hand touches. So let's make sure that ourselves, our households, and everything that our hand touches, that we're demonstrating this victory, success, destiny mindset in everything we do. And always understanding and always keeping hope that the Most High takes losers and turns them into winners. And that's the path that we on. May the Most High continue to lift you up that you never be torn down. So be it. Hallelujah.